Hi, I'm John Bumpus from mineralbalancing.org. This is how to cut a hair sample for a hair tissue mineral analysis in three easy steps. Please watch the whole video before attempting to cut your sample. The first step is to prepare the sample. To properly cut a hair sample, you will need stainless steel scissors, rat tail or sectioning comb, a clip or tie to keep the hair separated, and a friend or hairdresser to cut your hair sample for you. You will also need either a hair kit or two clean paper envelopes and a dessert spoon to measure your hair sample. The hair needs to be clean, well rinsed, untreated, and uncolored. Do not use any shampoo that contains minerals which may skew the results. A full list is provided in the description. Please avoid using conditioners or other products on your hair after you wash it. The hair should also be free of all gels, oils, and hair creams prior to sample collection. If in doubt, use an unscented Castile soap. The sample should be cut within 12 hours of washing the hair, and at least 4 hours after washing it to ensure that it's dry. If hair is treated, colored, or bleached, wait 6 to 8 weeks and take a sample from the freshly grown, untreated, virgin hair. You can still color the top section of your hair, just leave the roots uncolored in the section shown. If you've used a shampoo that we don't recommend, wash your hair twice, a few days apart, and then take the sample after the third wash. The ideal location for a hair sample is the occipital region of the head. This is a fancy way of saying the back of the head, as shown here. The samples will be taken from the area shown. This is the best location for a hair sample. However, you can also include some of the hair from the nape of the neck. This hair is very light though and doesn't make much of a difference for the sample weight. The green section is where we prefer to cut the samples from. When a sample is taken from this location, it is not noticeable with most hairstyles, even short hair. The same rule applies for long hair. Here's the client one day after taking the hair sample. The spot is nearly invisible. Many of our clients are worried that taking a sample will ruin their hairstyles. If you follow these guidelines, you won't even notice it's missing. So now that we've prepared the hair, we've washed it, and it's completely dry, and we know where we're going to cut, we're ready for step two, cutting the sample. You can use a clip to hold the hair in place so that you can see your sample area more clearly. Or you can have the person whose sample you're taking hold their own hair out of the way. Cut the sample as close to the scalp as possible. Cut it in thin lines from the sample areas, about 4 centimeters across and half a centimeter wide, as this will avoid obvious bald spots. Be sure you are holding the hair that is being cut so that it doesn't fall on the ground. Here, we are taking the hair from another location. This is a before and after shot. As you can see, there isn't a huge bald spot using this method. If the sampled hair is less than 4 cm long, keep all of it for testing. If you have a shaved head, we will describe how to prepare your hair sample near the end of the video. If the hair is longer than 4 cm, measure and cut the sample, and keep what was growing closest to the scalp, discarding the excess. If you have a hair kit, you can use it to measure the perfect amount of hair with the cardboard scale, which will tip when it has enough hair. If you do not have a paper scale, you can use a jewelry scale and weigh out half a gram of hair. You can pick one up at a very reasonable price online. Some links will be available in the description. If you don't have a hair kit, it is best to err on the side of caution and fill a dessert spoon to ensure that there is enough hair for the analysis. This is the same sample in both images to show visually the amount of hair required, although some people have much lighter hair while others have heavier hair. Here's another example from a different client with hair that is not as heavy as the first. 
most people send in repeat hair tests to stay on a mineral balancing program. You can generally find the new growth and use this for the next hair test. This image shows the newly grown hair three months after cutting the original sample. Using this hair for your sample ensures that you can grow your hair out without losing the length while testing your mineral levels. It's hard to see as my fingers are holding the tips of the hair, but that is the full length of the regrowth. Once you have enough hair for your sample, Put it in a paper envelope that has your name, age, and sex on it. A regular letter envelope works well. Afterward, fold it in half and place this folded envelope into the other envelope that contains your order form that was provided to you by your practitioner. Samples will not be accepted without an order form. If you have a hair kit, you can place the sample directly into the small paper envelope provided. This small envelope is put inside the postal envelope that's also provided. Do not place your hair sample into a plastic bag or within aluminum foil. Only use clean paper envelopes. You should also avoid paper clips, staples, and adhesive tape. Try not to use any other metal of any kind to seal, secure, or wrap the sample. A clean paper envelope works best. Step three, mail the sample. If you're unsure on which lab to send the hair sample to, please contact your practitioner. If you shave your head, then cut with an electric razor what you can and save it in a paper envelope. During the next week or so, repeat this process until you fill a dessert spoon with hair or tip the scale provided in your hair kit. The only hair source that we recommend for analysis is scalp hair. Pubic, beard, and other body hair can be used as a last resort if scalp hair is not available. The reason is that hair from other regions of the body do not grow as quickly and the reference ranges on a hair test are based on studies done only on scalp hair. We only recommend using other sources of hair for the confirmation of elevated toxic metals that have been found in the scalp hair and or to rule out external contamination of the scalp hair. If you need to provide a sample for other than head, please send a message and we will guide you through the process. You can order a hair tissue mineral analysis from mineralbalancing.org. And if you'd like to learn more, please check out our website for interviews, in-depth articles, and more. Thanks for watching this video. I'm John Bumpus.